Hey Slasher fans, welcome again to the latest Slasher Studios commentary. We are taking on the one and only Scream 2. Yeah, uh, thanks for joining us again. Uh, this is my personal favorite of the Scream franchise. And we're going to share with you guys some tidbits about the making of the film and about our personal experiences with Scream 2. So sit back, relax, and if you're starting the movie, uh, play your movie right now. All right, so we have the the Blu-ray in. Kevin, how many copies of Scream 2 do you own? Uh, I have it on VHS. I have the DVD. I have the Blu-ray. Uh, so at least three. Okay, yeah, I got the DVD and, and Blu-ray. I wasn't sure if you had the VHS one or not. I know you had the first one. Yeah, the first one on, on VHS, I have the all of them except for the the Drew Barrymore one. Mm -hmm. um, no, the, I'm sorry, the Neff Campbell one is the only one I don't have. Um, so I remember seeing this in the theater. I saw it opening weekend. I actually saw it opening night. I still remember the date. It was December 12th, 1997. Um, and I actually saw this movie. The day it came out, I saw every single show showtime at our theater i saw <laughs> i saw all four what's really sad is this shows like what an obsessive fan i am is that i still remember all four showtimes it was at 120 405 640 and 905 <laughs> i remember because i went to see all four of them my mom let me skip school for the day so i could just hang out at the theater and i hung out at the theater all day this was my easily my most anticipated movie of the year it came out uh a week before uh titanic uh so it was really kind of we only had one big big weekend at the box office but the weekend was big and we'll we'll talk to you more about the kind of, the kind of theatrical reaction and the box office later on hmm. so after everybody was done making fun of you in the theater for staying there all day were you in love with the movie? Was it all you hoped for? What were you thinking at that point? Um, I think my... Okay, well, first of all, for the you guys watching, the the girl who gives them the... the... the ghost face mask, the costume, who works there, she actually won this role. MTV was giving out a prize where you had to win $5,000. Big schnoz. <laughs> $5,000, and you got... Uh, a role in the film where you got a speaking role and I still remember there was a 1-900 number and I called it that summer I called it over and over and over again I ended up racking up over a hundred dollars on my my mom's phone bill my mom had to paint it poor mother the irony behind all of this is that I found out afterwards that even if I had won I wouldn't have been able to because you had to be at least 18 hmm. so that's kind of the 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 story behind that I I remember the the summer that Scream came out on VHS was the summer of 1997 and that's when they first announced that they were doing the sequel to Scream and I had no idea what they were going to do with this it was originally called um it was Scream and Scream Again and then also Scream Louder were two of the working titles and this was kind of the movie that I mean, this is really the peak of the franchise with Scream 2. And this is the movie that everyone in Hollywood wanted a part of. Everyone wanted to just be part of this movie phenomenon. And I I still remember to this day what kind of uh, a reaction this got. And like you said, um, you know, what, what was my... What did I originally think of this? I, I don't know. Like, I think my expectations were so high that I was a little bit disappointed, which I, ironically, when I first saw in the theater, I was stupid, and I, I said to myself, I really liked Scream 2 a lot, but I thought I knew what Jalea Summer was better, which now I don't even think I know what Jalea Summer is very good, and I think that Scream 2 is the best of the franchise. Hmm. Interesting. Have you ever been to a theater... With this much kind of chaos going on, I mean, it'd be almost fun to to kind of take in a movie with everybody's just so hyped up and excited. I guess the closest thing I've been to was when 
you and I went down to the Drunken Zombie Film Festival, and the people were like yelling at the at the screen and talking along with the movies. But as far as how um, big budget goes, I've never been yeah, a part of anything like that. I mean, this. I've seen a little bit. I mean, when I saw Scream 4 opening night, which we'll talk about more in that commentary, there was a little bit of this kind of reaction, but nowhere near this kind of chaos and this kind of... But it was so... I can't even describe how surreal this was, watching a Scream movie in the theater as they're watching Stab and wondering if something like this could happen. <laughs> Were you scared? I wasn't scared. Um, I will say, so to talk about the the audience reaction to this film, um, there was it was probably about half half full for the one o'clock and the four o'clock showings. Not even probably half full. Probably maybe a third full because school was still in session. This was December, and once it hit the six forty showing, that's when. I, I cannot even describe, it was the one and only time in my entire life where, you know, you hear these stories of people were lined up around the block. Literally, people were, were lined up outside of the theater to get in. I would say there was probably a good 100 people in line, and we got done with the 640 showing, and I went out to get popcorn for the 9 o'clock. Oh, five showing. <laughs> how many? I wonder how many buckets of popcorn you ate that. I day. think just two. I think I just, um, but th- but I mean it wasn't even that expensive back then. I I still remember. I still have my movie stubs. I think I still have them. The 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 matinees were four bucks and the evening showings were six. Nice. So um, so for for the day to see it four times, um, I only spent twenty dollars for those five showings, which I mean that'd be two showings today um i'm sorry yeah for the 20 bucks for those four showings and maybe i spent another 20 bucks on concession stuff for the day <laughs> so maybe like 40 bucks is my screen day by myself at the theater um but yeah when 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 i got out for that 640 showing uh there was actually a rope to the theater so you could get you couldn't get in right away and the the entire lobby the entire lobby there had to have been at least 150, maybe 200 people waiting for that showing to get out for the next showing to start. Hmm. So that this was the only, I guess, movie going experience you had where it was that big of a draw and people were outside? Yeah, I mean, Scream 3, there was a lot of people for. Scream 4, not so much. But um, I, I can't even really describe. So this movie, when this movie opened... This movie broke huge box office records. This was the number one, the, this was the highest grossing December opening in box office history when it opened. It was the highest grossing ever for a rated R movie. Um, this is the highest grossing opening ever for Miramax, highest grossing movie ever for Dimension. Uh, this movie was just. I mean, this movie made $33 million opening weekend, which that was in $97, in $1997. For today, that would be the equivalent of a slasher opening to about $60 million opening weekend. Hmm. Yeah, that's big money. Yeah, I guess the only kind of experience I had where it was just such a huge draw. When you saw Twilight? I've never seen Twilight. New um, Moon? No. What Hunger Games? No. The Dark Knight. Went okay. to the theater um, down in Tempe, Arizona, and I mean, you could just tell by the parking lot. I still remember that it was just packed. Mm-hmm. It was like that one we saw Dark Knight too. I actually forgot about that one. Yep. I mean, you couldn't even you couldn't even get in. I mean, it was just people were lined up outside. Did you? So you went to the midnight one? Um, <coughs> I tried. I didn't end up going because it was there. Was just it was so many people, so I didn't even end up going seeing that. But I, it was kind of cool because I tried kind of just taking in the atmosphere, and they had the. Uh, the Batmobile and all that stuff out there. So it was kind of a cool setup that they had going on. So, I mean, that could have brought a few more people in. So I guess that was kind of the biggest draw draw movie I have been to when I saw Scream 4. Um, same theater, actually. It wasn't packed, I would say, but there were still some people that you could tell were lifetime fans. They were they were dressed up. They were, they were excited. Um, like I said, wasn't... 
wasn't overly crowded, but it was it's it had a fun experience though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for the Dark Knight, I went to Midnight, and the theater here is a sixteen screen theater, and for the for the Midnight showing, they had on all sixteen screens, and I I never heard of that before. All sixteen screens sold out. Um, and what what was awful was the there there was no planning like. Like, if you were, you just got your ticket by random, like, you would get your ticket, and it would say, like, it, it, it was the most chaotic experience ever, because you get your ticket, and your ticket would say, okay, this is in theater 13, your, your friend behind you, because they was all, like, you didn't know until you got your ticket, it'd be like, oh, your friend is in theater 10, so there was all of these people that were trying to switch back and forth so they could be with their friends and people who arrived late hmm. didn't know what theater to go to, um, what screen. It was just, it was utter chaos. I've never heard of that before. Yeah, it That's was crazy. so weird. Hmm. So we haven't talked at all about Jada Pinkett. So she's in this opening scene. Um, great sport. I think she's really... She really know she's really selling this role. I love her character. She's kind of the character. She didn't even want to go to this movie. She didn't want to be a part of this. You got Heather Graham playing Drew Barrymore on the screen for Stab. Hmm. And yeah, Jada Pinkett, awesome. She just looks amazing today. I don't think she's aged today. Uh, but this year, so this came out on December 12, 1997. This year, for Christmas, to thank Wes Craven for giving her a role in this, she gave him a brand new set of steak knives. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, this is a fun opening, especially a fun opening to to witness at a theater, as you know, Kevin was kind of alluding to earlier. I mean, just there's so much going on here, and just to be able to be like in a theater, watching people in a theater, mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty cool. Well, Wes said... In 1997, when this came out, and this is crazy because, so there was all these extras in this theater. He said that night, this entire scene was on the internet. And this was in 97. Hmm. Like, I don't even think I had internet in 97. If I did, it was, well, I'm sure I probably did have internet. Because I remember checking the box office grosses like every single day for this movie. But, um... It was dialogue. It was really slow. But I can't even imagine having an opening like this today. <laughs> like, I'm sure that people will be posting videos on, like, Instagram immediately. Yeah, I'm sure, you know, nowadays, they crack down. Definitely do a little search search of cell phones and mm -hmm. all that good stuff. So, I still remember going to... I can't remember what movie it was. But I went to a screening for something, and they asked for my cell phone. I was like, for what? Like, what do you want my cell phone for? You know, and obviously, you know, post stuff on the internet and all of, all that good stuff, videos, pictures, whatever. And at first, it just seemed so kind of foreign to me. And now it's just, you know, it's just second nature. Yeah. It's really weird, like, just how much things have changed. And, I mean, here is kind of the introduction of Caller ID. We didn't have Caller ID in the first film, so just one year later... Um, I believe in movie time, this is two years later, um, Neve Campbell's grown up a little bit. Do you like her hair in this one? I do. I do. She looks good. Do you like her sports bra? Mm, yeah, I like that better than her hair. <laughs> <laughs> so some sad news is that um, Nev Campbell announced in an interview, I believe it was yesterday, is that she does not think that Scream 5 is going to happen. And if it does happen... She probably will not be a part of it. I think they were expecting Screen 4 to be bigger than what it was, and it was just, it was too many obstacles to kind of get everything together for Screen 4. And, yeah, I just, it doesn't sound like it's going to happen. Hmm. So here's Kevin Williamson in his little cameo. There's the Freddy sweater. Yep. Yeah. And we got Cotton Weary, Leah Schreiber. Mm-hmm. It's funny because all we've really known about about Cotton is just seeing him on a TV screen. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, I've talked about this with other people, and my mom is a huge screen fan. And I mentioned this in another commentary. She loves these all. 
like, out of all of, kind of, the horror movies, Scream really does feel like a horror movie soap opera. Like, you have these characters with backstories, and how are they going to intersect, and you bring them back for a sequel, and, yeah, it's interesting. So there's a girl coming up. She's probably the worst actor in this entire series. <laughs> I hate her. Here she comes. Check out the news. <laughs> and she just runs away. I don't know who that girl is, but she's Maybe awful. she won, like, an MTV drawing thing like you tried. She was the winning, the winning girl. She didn't win. She didn't get anything. <laughs> she had to have known somebody that was involved in this. So, yeah, we're in college. I will say that I'm kind of disappointed um, in the fact that... <laughs> Look at that girl with the dress. <laughs> Do a lot of girls who were dressed like that in your college? Zero. And she's got the velvet jacket that she actually wears in Scream 3 as well. Nice. Um, yeah, I, I mean, this is very 90s, but at the same time, I mean, I don't know. Like, it doesn't... It, it, I think it holds up well. It does. Sarah Michelle, always, That's right. looking, always looking nice. I've never had a class where it was kind of... This open, where people yeah, are just kind of talking. just doing whatever, just slouching and talk wherever you want. Or, correct me if I'm wrong, but did they not have... Okay, they do have little desks from uh, from the white shot. <laughs> it looked like it was just chairs, basically. Who are these kids in this class? Yeah, I never had, like, I always wanted film class like this. I was excited to go to college because I thought that college was going to be like this. I mean, I was in high school when this came out. Um, got little Joshua Jackson. Yep. Mighty Ducks. People used to say I look like Joshua Jackson. <laughs> I think I did a little bit more when I had a little bit more of the fatter. I like that kid, be like, I guess I never left that kid behind. Yeah, I know. I was <laughs> Mickey, that's like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So this is actually a reshoot. They actually had this in the, it was actually in the auditorium with a different teacher. Hmm. And they only had Sarah Michelle Gellar for the one scene, and they felt that they needed to establish her character before that one scene. And there's actually stills of Sarah Michelle Gellar outside as well. So there was probably another scene. I don't know what happened to it. Um, but I kind of feel girl bad for the girl who was in the auditorium who had all of Sarah Michelle Gellar's lines. I mean, Pretty much, they just reshot this and added that. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, yeah, Pacey, Joshua Jackson was not in the scene. But, um. I like Nick, Randy's new look. Uh, no, I, I don't like him in the first one. I mean, he doesn't look <laughs> very good in here. So we got Sydney and Randy is just still in love with her. Mickey's looking good, though. Timothy Oliphant. Oh, he's a good guy. Our good friend, former uh, slash slash Studios family member, Keegan Bergen. He was a big, big Timothy fan. Yeah, all he wanted to do when he called into our show about Scream, we did we did a podcast mm. on the entire Scream, and all he wanted to do was talk about Timothy <laughs> Oliphant the whole time. <laughs> big fan of Justified. So our good friend Cody um, announced that he he does not like um, he does not like Randy either. So um, yeah, he does not like Randy in this movie. Um, so I'm glad that there's another horror fan that's out there that also does is not a big Randy fan. So um, we had Jerry O'Connell. He's kind of the good the good boy in this. Kind of the the frat boy. Kind of. You know, the hunky boyfriend. Looks like he's pretty well off. Yeah. I, I do. Nice. I think that Jerry O'Connell is sexier that. than Mickey. Mickey. Who do you think sexier? Mickey or, um, why can't I even think of his name in this? Why can't I think of Jerry O'Connell's? Derek. Derek. So he here's nice where khakis. I think Courtney looks the best. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, she does look good. Yeah, she looks so you, better. You think she looks better in the first one? No, this one right here. You you said in the last commentary, so you're calling yourself a liar. Yeah, I 
I lied. <laughs> I like the red streaks. I think they look good yeah, on her. Yeah, looks good. She's got that nice draw showing off her body. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she should. Powerful she like she woman. In, she looks like she got in shape. Oh, yeah. there's Lori Metcalf yes. in the background. Just <laughs> look at <laughs> my <laughs> favorite characters <laughs> of all time. <laughs> well, you got to love Lori. I mean, she's great in this, Roseanne. She's great as Andy's mom in well, Toy Story. She mentions that she's like, she's like, when whenever I'm doing like autographs or anything, whenever I'm talking to fans, that she'll be like, okay, like, she likes to do fan profiling. And she'll be like, okay, well, like, she's like, these people are going to be Toy Story, mm. and these people are going to be Roseanne. And she's like, once in a while, they'll, they'll walk up to her and she's like, this is going to be Scream too. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing that I've always wondered, so her name's Debbie Salt in this. Do you think her real name was Debbie, or do you think her whole name is fake? Hmm. Do you think it's Debbie Loomis? No, I would have to say like, it's I, all fake. What do you think her her name is? Her first name is Mrs. Loomis? Mrs. Mrs. Loomis. Lori Loomis. That's perfect. You like that lady? <laughs> hmm. I want to read the, the Woodsboro Murders. I like the, the little things that Courtney's doing to get the camera guy back on her. That's funny. Yeah, she's really good. She sells this role so well. I know we talked about that in the other screen commentary, but, um, you know, and, and people have asked me why I like Scream 2 better than the original. Um, and there's a lot of people that like the original better. For whatever reason, I think that Scream 2, although it's only one year later, I don't think think it feels as dated i think that the the cinematography is like there, there's something about the original that kind of has a little bit of a hazy very 90s look i think this very much besides the outfit <laughs> the outfit feel like something <laughs> that would happen today i mean i think the i think this is probably one of us craven's best job directing so here we got Rebecca Gayhart and Portia De Rossi mm -hmm. as the sorority girls. Hmm. Are those dresses in back in the day? Like, is that what college girls wear? Um, I remember what Haley's wearing. Kind of those, like, I don't even know, like those, like, we got those, two, like right here. We got two sweaters. No, on the I, I don't remember that. Um, I do remember it like, very like what, what Porsche's wearing. Those like those like um God, what do you even call those? Like those blouse? Not a blouse. Like th those like shirts can a cami. No. That's like a cami. Where it's, it's like not a cami. It's got the fake tie, like in the front. It's not a cami. It's like a cami. It's like a fake cami. Cami's like a tank top. What would like But that's kinda what she was straps. wearing. But anyway, but we're like the fake bow in the front. Like I remember girls wearing that. <laughs> See, a lot of people are looking better, and I, I can't say the same thing about David Arquette. So you, so now you're now you're saying that Nav and Corey look better in this one. That's what I've always said. Mm -hmm. It's crazy that it's just one year later. They did a really good job of establishing time. Mm -hmm. um, it's crazy the fact that this movie started shooting before the original was even on video. Um, I just think that that's absolutely insane. But the press for this movie was crazy. Um, I remember Primetime Live did this whole piece on how horror movies affect people. They showed clips from the original and they tested like heart rate and stuff. And they also showed stuff from Scream 2. It was pretty much just a half an hour advertisement for Scream 2. I didn't mind it because I was such a Scream fan, but I wonder if there's some kind of connection because Primetime Live was hosted by Diane Sawyer, and there's like a million Diane Sawyer references in this movie. Huh. It seems like everyone's hair in this movie has kind of a reddish tint. Yeah. You should grow a mustache like Dewey. <laughs> Get a gun. 
goatee like Randy. No. I used to, I used to have a goatee <laughs> for like a year. Oh god. When was this? Um maybe like two thousand one. Yikes. And then like I didn't even have I don't know if you guys remember this, and I don't even remember what it's called. But do you guys remember Red Tail. No, I did have a red tail when I was in like third <laughs> grade. But um like it wasn't the soul patch. But it was just like underneath, like the chin, where you'd only have the hair right there. <laughs> Do you remember when that was popular? For like, it seemed like it was just for a couple of months. But it was like just right here, like just the chin. Like there'd be hair like right underneath. <laughs> Do you remember that being popular for a little while there? I don't think that was ever popular. It was like around 2000, 2001. Maybe, maybe where you were living that was popular. So we know there's going to be a punch coming. Uh oh. Would you be scared of Cotton? Yeah, he's a scary dude. She put him in prison for a year. Hmm. Look at Mickey in the background. He looks he looks very creepy. He's just kinda his eyes just going back and forth. Oh, so this was all improvised right here when Haley says, did you get that on film? And then he says, yes, I got that on film. And that was also improvised. And she was so pissed off that he upstaged her. She's like, oh, I'm going to add in this line. It's going to be so funny. And then <laughs> no one really laughed at her. And everyone laughs at him making <laughs> fun of her. <laughs> so poor Haley. So who do you think you'd be in Scream 2? Mickey? So yeah, I mean, about Scream 2, why do I like this movie better? I feel like the characters are well more well-defined. I think especially Courtney Cox, I feel like she's got the, the most chance to shine in this. This one, out of all of them, they show how kind of ruthless she is, but the fact that she also kind of has a heart, I think that her relationship with Dewey, um, David Arquette, is really sweet in this. I love the college. It's kind of got a gothic look. It they really they really found a great college. I believe this was shot in Atlanta during the summer. Hmm. Something like 115 degrees, just miserable heat. But yeah, I just I feel like it's scarier. I yeah, I just I really like this film. Um I think the original is a classic. But yeah, I think that this one's just a tiny, tiny bit better. Yeah, the, the school they found, um, I don't know if you actually know the name of the school, Kevin, but yeah, it looks it looks just so good. I mean, everything's just so green and lush, which just makes um, the picture pop off the screen. And then the buildings will have a brick and <coughs> huge, huge buildings. I mean, that just gives you a great a great backdrop to, to know, um, to just having the characters kind of walking through this this lot or whatever you want to call it and um, just having these nice buildings in the background. Yeah, the relationship the relationship is so cute. I'm sad that they're not together in real life anymore. I feel like they would have made the perfect couple. He went to screw it around. <laughs> Maybe she wasn't putting out. They had a kid. Well, she got the kid and Coco. then she didn't do anything else, maybe. Coco. <laughs> Coco. Yeah, this nice streaks line, that got a big um, applause in the theater. I still remember that. Do you ever have streaks in your hair? I know you used to use sun in them. No. Do you go to any parties like this? Not like this. This is a pretty, pretty subdued party. Did they have, like, martini glasses? Is that what I saw? Um, maybe. The girls? And she's on the phone. Oh, the cord. She just throws the cookie. There you go. Take the jacket off. These girls got way too many clothes on for a college party. <coughs> These girls don't? <laughs> okay, Portia's actually outfit right here, I could actually see a girl wearing today. That kind of Argyle dress. And actually her hair, too. 
I don't know what's going on with her eyebrows, though. <laughs> Caterpillars? But, yeah, this actually isn't the only movie she did with Wes Craven. She also did Curse. She was the gypsy fortune teller. Was she still married to Ellen, or did they get a divorce? No, they're still happily married. So, I, I heard something. I heard some rumors floating around. And I'm a, I like Ellen. I'm a big Ellen fan. So, so. Um, with this scene, um, I, I still remember watching this on video. Um, Sarah Marshall Geller's character, my girlfriend at the time, she said that she deserved to die because she was wearing too much makeup. She looks good. You think she's wearing too much that? makeup? What? She doesn't know what she's talking about. She's like, she's about. got too much eyeshadow on. Oh, please. My girlfriend is not a fan. She's just jealous. She might have been jealous. She, look, she looks very good right here. she got her nice phone with her. I, I love this scene. Like, mm -hmm. the... So she's talking to Sarah. Um, she's uh, Sarah Michelle Geller is talking to Selma Blair on the phone. Which it's funny. Just two years later, they were gonna do, uh, Cruel Intentions together. So this is right before that. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I guess her outfit too. I could kind of see a girl wearing today. Why do you always answer a question with a question? Mm. So I believe this is the scene that they're watching in Halloween H two O. They're in the party. Mm. We got a good score <coughs> in this one as well. We talked mm -hmm. score a little bit in the first one. I actually like the score in this one a little bit better. I think that it's more. Um, they do a better job at kind of isolating the effects. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah, I just think that I think that the the cinematography is a little bit more creative in this one. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think that there's a little bit. I think that they're having a little bit more fun. I mean, it's crazy the fact that this movie was completely rushed. It doesn't look it. The fact that they shot this movie in over the summer of '97 and it was in theaters for December of '97, which I cannot even imagine editing like a movie like this like editing on film having like three months to edit mm -hmm. yeah they must have a really good really good editing crew going on i mean yeah and then touching on your cinematography and camera work i mean you can t you could tell right from the beginning just how i don't i don't know if it update is updated the right word modern modern maybe but yeah there, there is a different Different kind of look or feel to it, and it's it's good. It's it's kind Would of refreshing. Would you like her roommate? <laughs> Roommate's not bad. Would you go for Sarah Michelle or the roommate? Sarah. Actually, what the roommates wearing, I could see girl, like girls wore that in the nineties. Okay, I thought you were gonna say that right there. No, like that in the nineties, like those those sweaters. Yep, with like those. Mm -hmm. There's ghost face in the background. <laughs> so here's where we notice right here. I still remember going to the theater. <gasps> There's two killers. Hmm. So yeah, in the original there was kind of the the surprise, but here we know that the ghost face is on the phone, so there's gonna be two killers. There's so I mentioned in the screen commentary, there was a couple of things that I didn't like about the original screen. There's one, there's only one thing I don't like about Scream 2. When we get to it, I'll mention it. No eating, let me know. Oh. So, I, in your, in your sorority, were you sober sister? Or were you one of the drunk sisters getting <laughs> drunk at the party? <laughs> Uh, neither, but if I would be one, I'd probably be one of the drunk, one of the drunkies, but, um. You'd probably go and you'd be like, I'm not going to drink. <laughs> like, I can still drive. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. And pass I can drive the, drive the girls home. <laughs> I 
I love these huge doors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is another really kind of unique house. A lot of good colors. I mean, it's got the warm tones, which is always nice. I See her kind great. of um her um Carol Brady hair a little bit. Carol Brady hair. She's kind of got the where it curls up on the sides. Kind of. A little bit modern Carol Brady. Sure. Especially in the back. <laughs> Do you ever have Remember one? Remember those phones? I had one. In I my bet bedroom. you did. I, I knew a girl that had one. <laughs> yeah, I had. That was the first <laughs> phone I ever had. For my 16th birthday, I got oh, my phone wow. in the bedroom. And I'm like, I want one of those see through phones. And I still remember that I sold a bunch of those, like, do you remember, like, in school, like, when you'd sell, like, those magazine subscriptions, like, raise money, and you could choose, like, prizes? Like, I need to sell, I think it was, like, 36 magazine subscriptions so I could get that corded phone in the mail to see through on. You and I'm it. so excited. <coughs> hmm. Once again, she's breaking the rules. She was running up the stairs and she should be going out the front door. And then splat. And then we get into um, Everclear. They're Old Everclear. Out. Everclear was good. I loved this song. Um, the Swing. This is one of my favorite songs on the soundtrack. So it's funny, um, the year later, Rebecca Gayhart was in her own horror movie um, that she got to play a killer herself, Urban Legend. And she played a great killer at the end of that movie. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of lot of big names in this one. I mean, like we saw Joshua Jackson yeah, earlier in the, right. the school, and you got a lot of good people here. This is very much a who's who of... Okay, so... Mickey's sweater here, the V-neck sweater. You had that. I had many versions of that <laughs> sweater in different colors. We talked in another commentary about that was very much a cold sweater. Hmm. I know you had a couple polos like Randy. No, I don't. No, I never had Pretty any polos sure you like did. that. Um, Derek's button up i had a lot of those never i never did that with the button though where i kept it down Ugh! did you do that what do you mean kept it down where like you can tell like on his collar on his like you would take off that button no and you don't it... take that off you keep that on no you that's let why it you weren't flow. cool like Derek. Oh, no you let oh it flow he does that that's the only thing you would do with that i've never I've never seen that. You would keep the cup. So where is Matthew Lillard? Isn't he in this scene? He's got a little cameo, right? He's like one of the kids running. Coming up. Did we miss him? So we got... It's Mrs. Loomis, though. I hope no one's listening to this commentary and never watched this movie before. <laughs> So our friend Zachary Allen, who mentioned the last commentary, um, he said he would be definitely Mrs. Loomis because he can rock a white pants suit. <laughs> yeah, and don't we know it too? I have no doubts in my mind that he could not pull off that white pants suit <laughs> that she wears at the end. <laughs> She's Courtney Cox is such a great bitch face. Mm-hmm. So how do you like this camera guy compared to uh, um I, I like him. I like the fact that he's guy. not um dumb, fat. Yeah, and also he's not kind of the stereotypical African American. And we actually have I mean, Scream is kind of like known for like the fact that it's very white bread, but I mean this one really has out of the, the series, I mean, we have three African Americans in fairly big roles, I mean very important roles. We have um, Jada Pinkett and Omar Epps at the beginning, and then we also have Dwayne Martin as the cameraman. So this scene always bugs me, because I remember in all the TV spots and all the trailers, when she answers the phone, Ghostface says, it's time, girlfriend. And it's not in the film. I wanted Ghostface to say, it's time, girlfriend. <laughs> 
<laughs> you say that a lot? No, I've Next never said time, that. Besides, girlfriend. I've never said that besides. Have you ever said that to Zachary Allen? <laughs> I don't think I have. So, I mean, but everyone loves Mrs. Loomis. Our friend Andrew loves him. Our other friend Ferdy loves I mean, um, her. Uh, our other friend Ferdy also loves Mrs. Loomis. See, this is really well staged. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do a lot of good. It's a lot of good camera movement here. Mm -hmm. So is Ghostface in here more or less clumsy than in the first? Probably slightly less, <laughs> but not by much. <laughs> do we? <laughs> That's how you were on it. <laughs> So we stabbed him and he ran away. <coughs> <coughs> There's the girls. So I guess in the original script, these two girls die. Hmm. So that's a fake arm. You learn that in the Still Screaming documentary. That's a fake arm. That's a fake arm. Right there. Yeah. I don't think so. Yes, it is. Then Jerry Connell's lying. That's a fake arm. So Wes Craven's cameo right there in the background. He's the mm. the doctor with kind of the hot nurse. Hmm. <coughs> like Timothy's hair in this one. It's interesting. It's not too bad. So the the editor of the first three screen movies, um, Patrick Lussier, uh, he's actually a director himself now. He went on to direct Drive Angry and also the My Bloody Valentine 3D remake. And he also did um, Dracula 2000. So in your first viewing, theatrical viewing of Scream 2, I'm sure you were pretty hyped up, excited, probably hopped up on a lot of pixie sticks. Were you, was there a time during any of the, I guess, four screenings when you actually kind of sat back and maybe felt sorry for Sydney or had some kind of sympathy or were you just amped up? Yeah, I felt bad for him and, in all of these. Where it goes face, I don't where it goes face. No, I, I still remember that first show time, that first day. I was very analytical. I was like, this is taking long. Like, okay, well, this scene, like, I should have had, like, my notepad. And be like, okay, well, this, this reference this. And I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure it out. And, like, wait, this character is connected to this person how? And this person is giving this person this look. And then by, like, my fourth viewing, that last one of the day, I'm like, okay, well, this is what's going to happen. And I was trying to have a spoiler for people. Yeah, I saw it by myself, all four screenings. <laughs> I sat by myself in the theater. <laughs> oh, boy. This is what I don't like. So this is the scene right here that I don't... So they make this connection here, Courtney Cox does, that the, that the, um, that the characters are somehow... The names are connected to the people in the first one. That Cece's real name is Casey, as in Casey Becker. And Phil Stevens, Stephen was the name of Casey's boyfriend. And Maureen Evans, Maureen was the name of um, Maureen's mom. What I don't like about this is that Sydney's after the... Mom. Yeah, Sydney's mom. Uh, what I don't like about this is that after the scene, this is never mentioned again. And none of the other deaths are at all connected to this. 
So I think that the scene probably should have been cut. Do you think there was any substance or um? Do you think there were any scenes cut after this that kind of touched on the subject? No, if I had a feeling, I I wouldn't have even doubted it if that was something that was maybe added, just for the fact that I think that people were wondering, well, Sarah Marshall Geller's character, that feels very random, like why this one particular girl, like she's not at all connected to the characters, why would they have killed her? So like, I think that's why it was connected, and that's why they had that. So Kevin, whether it was... I guess Scream 1, because we didn't really touch on that too much, or Scream 2, was there, maybe I shouldn't say favorite scene, but maybe favorite, maybe backdrop you had, or a favorite location in either of these movies? Yes, and we're coming up to it. It's in Scream 2. I love the sound. I, I love the scene in the sound room with Corny Cox, mm -hmm. where... Um, I think that's probably, actually, it's really funny because the two most suspenseful scenes, I think, in the entire series are both in Scream 2, and that's the Courtney Cox scene, and then also the scene with the cop car that's coming up towards later in the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was actually thinking of the, um, the sound room one myself. I really like that. It's just, it's, it's got that kind of creepy feeling, too, when there's somebody right there so close to you, but you can't really mm -hmm. do anything to either get them attention or the other person can't do anything to help. So it's kind of that just helplessness feeling. Did you think Dewey died? Dewey's going to come back. You know he's going to come back. Did you think he was going to come back when he first saw us? I don't know. I can't remember way back then. But there we have. She always just saw her out. Yeah, she's just kind of eyeing her up. <laughs> So yeah, Laurie Metcalf said when she originally got the script that so all of this stuff alluding to who the, who's the killer was blacked out of the script. And she's like, I had a lot of black pages. Hmm. She's like, I had a feeling. And what's funny is that they weren't even allowed copies of the script. You, They were delivered by a bodyguard. The bodyguard stayed there for two hours while you read the script, and then he took the script from you when you were done reading it. Hmm. And I don't know for sure if they had the ending. I know the original script did have a different ending. It was originally, um, there was originally three killers, and it was Mrs. Loomis, Derek, and Haley. Hmm, interesting. So when did uh, Lori find out about her, her character? Probably not until they were going to shoot. That's crazy. Or probably pretty close to that, maybe that week. So when we went to school in Oshkosh and Reunion, um, how come you never got on the table and sang these songs? <laughs> I was too busy looking at that cafeteria lady's buns, remember? <laughs> you were always eyeing up her buns. <laughs> What she's doing nowadays. Probably still there. Sam subs. Yep. You would always walk over there and you'd always look at her buns. <laughs> and you're like, I'm she not had paying, good buns. I'm not paying that much for those buns. <laughs> Did you wear some pleated khakis? I've never been a fan of pleats. What about those um, loafers? Well, I don't think anybody really wore those kind of clothes. I mean, Mickey, that's kind of what you wear now for your job, isn't it? Mickey's got the got the style going a little bit more. I don't remember anyone dressing this preppy. I think this might have been just a little over the top. <coughs> But I mean, this was also college, so. Love you. So here they'll pl kind of play the instrumental beginning for Collective Souls, she said, which is 
pretty much kind of the theme for this movie. They played here and they also played over there in credits. It's my favorite, favorite song in the movie. I probably listened to this song over, I don't know, maybe 500 times. And probably just 200 of those is just from watching this movie. But I love this instrumental beginning with the, I'm pretty sure those are not his hands. It seemed like a very awkward insert shot. Hmm. I could be wrong, but. <laughs> that seems, hurt yeah, ass. that seems to go awkward. <laughs> I would not be surprised if both of those were added later on. Huh. Nancy O'Dell. She's in all the Scream sequels. Mm. She still looks good today. She does. But what's Tori Spelling? Yeah. Who gives away the ending to the movie on there? <laughs> So we get to see the the scene from Stab with her and hmm. Luke Wilson. So Luke funny. Wilson is such a good Billy. <laughs> it's so it's hilarious. One thing that I've always wondered, and they never actually mention this, is that is this Luke Wilson? Like, is he playing himself or is mm. he an actor? Because I mean, we have Tori Spelling as Tori Spelling playing Sydney. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if this is Luke Wilson as Billy or if this is him playing an actor playing Billy. What is it? Does it say anything in the credits? Like Luke Wilson uh, dot 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 he, Luke I, Wilson? If, if I had to guess, he's probably credited as probably Stab Billy. I could be wrong, but Baskin Robbins? Hmm. That was good. Are they, are they still around? I don't think around here. I think there's one. I think there's one by Big Lots. <laughs> Is that still around? Yeah. I just went to Big Lots like last week. For what? I bought a bunch like of movies. a fake plant or a clock? No, I actually bought a bunch of DVDs there that were on clearance. They're like a buck each. Like, like the cartoons? Like Popeye? No, they were good ones. Lords of Dogtown. <laughs> You're never going to watch that. I'm going to watch it. It was a two-disc special edition. I only had the one disc. I forgot the other ones I got. <coughs> the, I, I still remember for the trailer for this movie, it was just this scene. And when he's going for the suspects, it was like quick cuts of all the people in the movie. And this entire scene was just the trailer. And that's all they ever did for the trailer for this movie. Hmm. It's Candyman's daughter. Was there anybody of the original cast that came over for the second or third or fourth that you would have maybe liked to have seen killed off and screamed <coughs> the original? Well, by four especially, I think Dewey's really useless. He's just kind of there. Um, they could have honestly killed him off. And, nah, I guess he gets married to Gil at the end of three or he actually proposes. Um, so, I mean, I guess for four, they could have killed him. I mean, three, they do kill Khan, but I think that's one thing that was missing for four is that, uh, all three of the originals live and there needed to be some kind of threat, but, and with all of them living, it's just like, well, okay. I remember when they reviewed this on Scream 2, I meant, ugh, ugh, can I talk today? 
when they reviewed this in Siskel and Ebert, this is the scene that they showed. Mm. Where that book is right now. Well, it's not a. It's there's. It's just a cover. I don't I know, know, but I'm sure somebody's got that, that on their mantle that cover. somewhere. Yeah. Um, it's they were selling it on eBay for some charity auction. Oh, I think for real? For like six hundred dollars. Oh, very cool. Because they sold that one, and they also sold Sydney's book for four. Nice. You can buy one of the knives with the ghost face costume that was screen used for like two grand. Did you get that? It's too much money. Get a shadow box, put that up. If I if I had my own room, my own horror room where I could do as much as I could that was just horror related and I had a place to put all this and I had unlimited funds, sure. What the hell? I'd do it. That's basically you right now. I have very limited funds. So how do you like the stuff with the theater where she's an actress and she's in her own production? We got David Warner here who's done a million things playing her theater mm -hmm. coach or a theater professor. I don't mind it at all. I think it adds another kind of level not only to her but to the movie as well. Mm -hmm. And actually the theme, her, her character theme in the play, uh, that was actually created by Danny Elfman. Mm. Do you believe she's a fighter? She's a fighter. She's a powerful woman, strong I, girl. I do think that, I think this movie does look better on Blu-ray than the original Scream does. I think it does have more de definition. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, especially comparing it to the original, which we just watched, watched last week, this one um, definitely has a lot more clarity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks really, really good. So you have the, I guess the trilogy set, don't you, Kevin? Mm-hmm. Are there any ex extra features on that that are not found on, I guess, the single, <laughs> single uh, Blu-rays that I have? No, they only have the bonus disc, which has the two documentaries. There's the Inside Story, which is um, the true story behind the original Scream, which is kind of an hour and a half just on the original film. And then there's also Still Screaming, which is a documentary on the first three Scream films. Hmm. We have Crystal Lake Memories. We were just talking the other day, and I guess there's a book coming out for um, the original Nightmare on Elm Street. Any talks of maybe some big, awesome book as far as Scream goes? I don't know. It's That'd be really it, cool. It would be cool, especially if they got a lot of these people. Um, yeah, I mean, there's still a lot that I think that we don't know about the Scream movies, and if they could get a lot of exclusive interviews with kind of some of the people like Timothy Oliphant who mm -hmm. haven't said a lot about these movies since they did them. Um, it would be interesting. Speaking of Cody that we mentioned before, um, we were talking about, I was talking with him the other day about this scene and about how we would love to see this as an actual play. Wouldn't you? <laughs> um, I, I've never been a big play guy, I guess. And would you want, he asked the question, would you want Ghostface in this scene? Like, would you want Ghostface as part of this? Yeah. Is Nev Campbell in it? Of course. And so are these guys. <laughs> You'd be one of those guys with backgrounds, like hunched over. No, you'd be the guy. I could be that guy. No, you don't have the body for that. It's fixed on me. He's pretty hunky. Some beefcake for you. Hmm. Were you scared at this part during this? When your first watch? No, I, I don't think so. I bet you got so. a little nervous. But the lightning, um, I know that scares like the, you. Like this, like, Nev's actually really good at this for the fact that she was actually in ballet for many years as a kid. And I think this kind of came second nature to her. No, this didn't scare me. 
You're scared of lightning. I wasn't scared of lightning at all. These, those girls are <laughs> in everything. They get around. I feel like that should be like, like the guy in the cross, like Jesus. Could be. <laughs> this is not really a cross, but a star is it? I think it's like a star. I think Nev's looking good here. Yeah, she's always looking good. Oh, Jerry O'Connell. Do you like him better here or in Piranha? Here. <laughs> Rana, he's looking a little aged. <laughs> Remember that show he had? Sliders? Sliders? No. That sci-fi show? No, he had like a sitcom. No, I don't. I just remember that sci-fi show. I think it like, might have been in like NBC. Lasted for maybe half a season, I think. Yeah, I can't remember what it was, was about it this year? now. Last year. Yeah, it was a couple years ago. It was a couple years ago. little research on that. I wish there was some kind of website that we could use to <laughs> look if up. Only, if only there was a website that listed everybody's works. Like movies where you could find out like chronologically like what they were in and TV mm -hmm. shows. He's six too. He's a big boy. <coughs> Burning Love? Was that it? He played so. Henry? It was an E. No. King and Maxwell. No. We Are Men. That's it. 2013. No. Nope. Yeah, I guarantee this is it. So is this season. It lasted for nine episodes. Is there a Jennifer Aniston reference? Yes. Is that the show you're thinking of? I don't know. I don't think so. I think, I you're think wrong. it is. Yeah, it's got to be We Are Men. Unless you're thinking of carpoolers. <laughs> it might have been carpooler. <laughs> it was 2007, though. Oh, no. He also did 88 episodes of Crossing Jordan. Hmm. You ever called anyone a phone head? Not yet. Uh oh. So you were fine that they killed off Randy here? I think it was his time to go. I agree. How big of a decision do you think that was during a maybe the writing process or oh, those kind of meetings with uh, <laughs> producers and Wes and um, Kevin and everybody just kind of involved? Like, like how huge of a decision do you think that is to kill off somebody that's so big and that came from the first one? It had to have been huge because I remember the 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 Monday afterwards because. All of my friends had seen this in theaters that weekend. Um, in our class, we were talking about Scream 2, and people were pissed that they killed off Randy. Like, I heard from a number of people that said if they make three, they're not going to watch it because Randy's not in it anymore. There were that many Randy fans? I guess so. They're still us to date. They actually mentioned that in Scream 3. That, um, what's his face is just a Randy substitute. Hmm. Ricky. Everyone's got cell phones and they're huge. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't think in 97 this many people had cell phones. I sure didn't. I don't think I had a cell phone until 2001. I think mine was 2003 when I got my first cell phone. I had a I had a camera inside. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I still remember because like I think it was, was, it was right after we like, became friends. And you were so excited. You're like, oh, I got a flip phone now. Because yeah. it was a little LG one. The LG. And I think that was like one of the first ones with a camera. <coughs> it was like 0. 0.3 megapixels. <laughs> I, I remember because I ended up getting that same phone. And it had like the little charging dock hmm. that you could sit it on. I never had that. Because yeah, you could flip it. And then it had like, like it didn't have anything on the outside, but it just had the light. Or you could tell like if you had like a missed call or something, it would flash in the upper right corner. Those guys are cool. Boombox. Poor Randy. Hmm. He had it coming. So I remember people were still like, <coughs> maybe maybe he didn't die because it happened off screen. Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Would you faint? I don't think so. Pretty tough, you know. So the scene in the library, so she gets an instant message from the killer. And her like screen like flashes. Oh god, these old computers. I don't I don't think that instant message ever worked like this. Remember these computers? I remember the computers, but not like who are these two? Yeah. Um like not like this, like there wouldn't be like an instant message that says you're gonna die tonight and black in her head. I remember more of like like AOL Messenger. How does he know what computer he is? I don't know. Well she he would Maybe like he had some like prototype at this college. <coughs> well she'd probably have her screen name or it'd be logged in under her like it might say like who's all logged in at any particular time in the library. All he wants is an interview with her with Diane Sawyer. Hmm. Is that so much to ask? I'm talking Diane Sawyer hmm. here. I was positive Colin was the killer when I first saw this. He's just really creepy. He's mm -hmm. weird. I thought there had to have been something with him. Not that we're there yet but we can kind of touch on it now maybe since we're kind of kind of talking about the killers were you pleased with who you found out the killers were were you excited were you <laughs> maybe a little disappointed that it wasn't your beloved cotton um i was fine with who the killers were i especially loved um mrs loomis i thought she just played <laughs> um she just played a great crazy bitch um mickey was just kind of here nor there um but yeah, all the stuff with Mrs. Loomis. She's she's actually my favorite killer of the whole series. So who's your favorite killer? Mrs. Loomis, hands down. Not, I thought Billy was. 
You thought he was the sexiest. No, Mrs. Loomis is <laughs> good in that pantsuit. She's super crazy with you. You think she's the sexiest yeah. villain? Or Jill? <laughs> Emma Roberts? <laughs> I compare apples to oranges, but she's the most entertaining. Emma or Mrs. Loomis? Okay. Which of the killers do you think is most like you, like, like motive wise, or like the reason for killing? That's a good question. Um, I can think about that. You, Jill. Jill. I've killed to become famous. <laughs> I could be Mrs. Loomis. You could be Mickey. I'm fine with that. <laughs> so you're going to end up shooting me? Yep. I still remember I was on some talk show. They played that scene of him getting, of him being interrogated. And this is probably a couple days before the movie came out. But yeah, like when he mentions, oh, there's been four murders. Like I remember, like in my head, like trying to figure out who. Like okay, well, well, where in the movie is this, and who died before this, and just kind of trying to figure it all out. Do you get anywhere? No. But I still remember watching the. The first time I saw the trailer for this, was I rented on VHS. We're only in Michelle's high school reunion, hmm. and this is the first trailer on that VHS, and I remember freeze-framing through it to try to figure out who all the characters were and to try to piece in my head who I thought the killer might be. Who did you frame it on most? Mickey? No, Mrs. Loomis. Jerry? <laughs> Mrs. Loomis? <laughs> I didn't freeze it on Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> That's Dewey's real life dad, Louis Arcot, hmm. who has sadly passed away since this. What's with these police pictures with just a white background? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's probably up against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> so if you could have any character that was killed maybe live for another movie or two or three which one would that be uh parker posey hands down screen three no parker question posey. Come back pick? and scream four? Yeah, I would love <laughs> for her to come back and scream four. Um, I loved her character. I thought she was really fun. I think she's by far and away the best thing about Scream 3, which we'll talk about next week on our commentary for that film. But she's a lot of fun. All of her stuff with Courtney Cox. You know, I think that part of the problem with Scream 4 is that the originals weren't giving enough to do, and that would have given her more to do if there would have been. I, I don't know if she would have still been playing her in the Stab movies. Or what exactly would have been happening, but. <laughs> I like the kind of irony, too, that she calls her look local woman and they're both from Woodsboro. Mm. Would you be a reporter like her? She's a hard nosed reporter. She wants to ask the tough questions. <laughs> it's 
It's a nice vest. It's got a lot of pockets. It does. Here comes Dewey. <laughs> Poor limpy yeah. Dewey. Oh, frail Dewey. This will probably be you in this one. Maybe. This is pretty much you now. <laughs> No, it's the guy hanging from that star, remember? No. Your body type's more like this. <laughs> What's your body type? Mrs. Loomis? No. <laughs> That's pretty much it. No. Or is that Zachary Allen? <laughs> Zachary Allen will not like that. <laughs> no, I'd probably say probably Jerry O'Connell. <laughs> from the body type. From Mickey. I'm pretty sure that you have his button up. No. He doesn't have a good checker print. So how do you like the use of the uh, the F bomb in this? Um, I don't feel like they swear nearly as much in this one as they do in the original. Mm -hmm. You think that was a a goal of theirs? Something that just kind of happened in the full of the <laughs> script? <coughs> Sorry for all my coughing. I'm getting over a cold here. Again, always. I know. So I've been many sick viruses. for three weeks. I get all these viruses from you. Oh. It, it all it all comes out when I come visit Steve. <laughs> um, yeah, probably, probably a little bit more mature. I mean, they're in college. You know, it is. I love that shot of uh, college. School of Film. There it is. We just had an arts and communications department. We didn't even have a school of film. This must be a huge school. Mm -hmm. So what your school of film look like in Arizona? No. It's a little old. Your school looked old? No, this one. Well, this is the this 90s. Like for middle school. Oh, so the this auditorium right here was not the same school. This was filmed in LA, I believe. Hmm. So that was a pretty seamless cut between the two. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, I definitely, without a doubt, I think Courtney Cox was the best in this movie. Definitely looking good. VHS tape. They gotta see if they they are gonna find something. Yeah, I just, I think their relationship's so cute in this, and she's she's trying to be you know hard edge and not show her kind of sensitive side. But what I want what I want to know is why is Dwayne filming all this? Like why would he hmm. be like right behind them like shooting all of this right here? Like, why would he be zooming in on their conversation? Like, why would he even care? Is he just going to use it to make fun of her later? I don't think so. Isn't there a scene in Friends where Ross and Rachel are in a room very similar to this? They're doing some of the same God, stuff. God, I haven't seen Friends in forever. I wouldn't doubt it. Ross was that professor, and I think I think there was a scene quite similar to this. I wonder if it was before or after this. <laughs> you grab a boob? Yeah, I have two hands up there. Such a perv. <laughs> More of a gentleman, I would not be grabbing boobs. <laughs> Staying away from the boobs. How freaked out would you be if you were there? I wouldn't run up there. all of a sudden, <coughs> you saw yourself on the TV. <coughs> yeah, I'd be really scared. My hair would be standing up in the back of my neck. Well, like, what does he expect to do? He can't do anything. 
I know he's like weak and yeah. No, Zeal. no. He'd be like, yeah, I'm going to show her what <laughs> kind of... I'm so strong. Everything about him in this one is Zeal. <laughs> but he's going to come down there and try to protect her. This is you right here, falling down the stairs. <laughs> I have good balance. Yeah, I love all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah, really suspenseful. I was just think, thinking too. I mean, the one thing that's awesome about schools um, are all the hallways mm -hmm. and the doors, and they can be locked or unlocked. And there's different hallways you're gonna run down and hide. And um, it's just it's a great location to have a film like this. So what would you do in her situation? Hmm. Especially if you saw the killer in the very next room. Would you hide? I would hide. I'd kick his ass. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to. Yeah, I would. I'd kick that knife right out of his hand. The limpy arm? <laughs> That's <laughs> you with the limpy arm. No, I'd, I'd probably be Gail Weathers and I'd kick the knife out of his hand and show who it was and save the day. You could not pull off a low-cut shirt like that. I could, too. <laughs> yeah, this stuff is really well-staged. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very maze-like. It like, really adds to the suspense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, where would you go? Like, What mm -hmm. would you do? Yeah, I mean, just kind of like, kind of snapping myself out of it for a second. I mean, th this scene just pulls you right in. It does. Like, there you are. You're going to save the day. <laughs> I guarantee you what's happening to him here when he, like, steps on, like, the piece of pizza. <laughs> like, that's probably happening to you. Like, you couldn't even save the day because you were trying to get the cheese off. <laughs> Aw, poor Dewey. <laughs> He's just trying to be the hero. I remember the scene, people were very, very sad in the theater. There might have been some tears. From you? No, I didn't yes. cry. No. Have you cried at any point in any four screen films? <laughs> in how many times? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, in screen three, when he gives her the ring at the end, I think it's really sweet. I don't think I cried, but I did. I did get a little choked up. Hmm. What about you? Well, what was the last movie you cried at? I don't. I've never cried at a movie. Never. No, I'm not a girl. Real men cry. <laughs> Real men show their emotions. <laughs> You've never cried during a movie. I haven't. Never? No. Lion King? No, not Lion King. What part did you cry during Lion King? I didn't cry during Lion King. I just figured that was the one that you had to cry <laughs> at. Just, uh, so all, of, all the animated films you've cried at was, um, I guess, in the episode of Futurama, the, the one that you, sticks with you the most? That <laughs> The Jurassic <laughs> Bark episode. A Futurama with Fry's dog. That made me bawl my eyes out, like to the point where, like, I I couldn't even talk. Like, I was so emo. Like, and just thinking about it later that night would make me cry. <laughs> and there's actually been three or four episodes of Futurama that made me cry. 
I think you teared up a little bit during Meet the Robinsons. Meet the Robinsons? No. If any cartoon would make me cry, which didn't. Cars? No, didn't like Cars. It would be when the end of Monsters, Inc., when Sully's uh, looking at that boo. little piece of wood, and then he goes and says bye to Boo. Yeah, that made me tear up. Yeah, I figured. What about Cars? Cars. Nut job? I never saw Nut Job. Was Nut Job good? No. They're making a sequel. Mm. So were you in a frat? Nope, never got into that. You? I always wanted to be part of a frat. I don't think you could handle it. I think I could. I could handle Hell Week. <laughs> or you either couldn't handle it or you would enjoy it too much. Maybe both. <laughs> I could handle this. That? Yeah, huh? I could handle girls pouring funnels of beer down my boxers. <laughs> could you handle this? I could handle Rebecca Gayhart staring up at me. Or those mom jeans. The guy's squirting all over you. <laughs> Would that be your favorite part? <laughs> yeah, we're actually leading up to another part I completely mm -hmm. forgot about, which I always enjoy. Don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> 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 yeah his scene his death scene that's coming up is pretty gruesome like it's pretty graphic so do you know anything about the problems with uh um getting an r rating on this one nope uh first time nice I think that actually the MPAA liked the opening and thought that was a good commentary. Like, they probably viewed it the wrong way of the, oh, this this movie's commenting on what horror movies do to people. Hmm. But also, I mean, it, this movie definitely is not as gory as the original. I think they used 50 gallons of blood in the original. I believe... 30 on this one and 10 on 3. I have no idea what they use on 4. Hmm. So they got progressively less bloody as they went along. Right through the windshield. Ugh. So this, they got to crawl around the killer to get out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, always a lot of suspense in this one. Always. Oh, I, I love what this. What would you do? Would you um, take off the mask right away? Of course. You have to. Would you be able to crawl around the killer or would you be too scared? <laughs> well, I'd be strong enough just to bust the window in the back open. No. Just kick it right in. Do they even have that kind of guard in police cars? Did they back then? I don't know what they use now. I don't know. I have no idea. Never been in the back of a cop car? Not yet. It shocks me. <laughs> Too smart. Have you ever heard of it? Um, rode in a cop car before? No. I only have once, but I was in the front. <laughs> 
Who was in the back? No one was in the back. No, just you it and was the cop. Just me and the cop. Just you and, you and, you and the he, officer, huh? Yeah, he gave me a ride home. Yeah. <laughs> he did. He gave me a ride home. Where were you guys coming from? Scream um, too? No, the my car broke down and he came and uh. <laughs> 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 it was actually when I was in when I went to college and my car was like just stuck there and I had no way back to the dorm. So luckily that the police officer of lacrosse gave me <laughs> a ride home. It was very nice. So you said you would take off the mask? Mm-hmm. Why? What if we had to grab you? Uh, I'm, too, I'm too quick. I, I would need to know. I would have to know. You would not crawl around. If you were Haley, you'd, <laughs> you'd tell me to bust the window <laughs> open if I were Sydney. Yeah, the actress playing Haley, um, I just saw her in the Still Screaming documentary. She still looks amazing, pretty much almost exactly the same as she did in here. Mm -hmm. Hard to believe this is a movie that it's been 17 years since this movie came out. I know, that Makes is Makes me feel so old. You are pretty old, but yeah, it's just so crazy to think how long ago that was. I think I've aged better than you. <laughs> I don't think so. I've aged like fine wine. <laughs> I've aged like cheese. Moldy. Yeah. Full of holes. <laughs> Smelly. Hmm. Buzz. Buzz. <laughs> Come on, Sid, go. I'm hungry for some cheese. Hmm. Love a good. Good slice of chunk cheese. Just a brick. You can just eat it. Take like a bite out of that. Where'd he go? How is he fast enough to get out of the car and then run around and then kill her? So quick. He's like a ghost. <laughs> With a face. And a knife. So, did you watch Scream when it first came out? The original? Mm hmm. Or was it a, What about the second one? Did you watch this one as soon as it came out? Um, yeah, I mean, both. Neither of them were in the theaters. It was both when they came out on. On a classic VHS. What about three? Oh no, three was three was years later. That's crazy. I saw it opening night. <laughs> so I guess in the TV cut, instead of cotton fucking weary, Cody said it's cotton picking weary. <laughs> cotton picking weary. I I love Debbie Loomis's reaction to. Cotton weary. Hmm. Like it just makes me wonder like what happened like right after that. And she's like, no, actually I'm the killer. Hmm. So everything's gonna come back to that theater stage. That's a really cool Exterior of the school, too, those arches. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know who did the What's location funny starting, but they did an awesome job. Kind of running into nothing, because this was all in L.A. Mm. I I love this finale in the theater. I think it's it's got a lot of really good dark humor, especially once Mrs. Loomis comes out. Mm -hmm. So was there any point where you were expecting it to be her? 
Um, I was surprised. I still remember watching this. Yeah, I think I was surprised. Um, I think that when I watched this, I remember being very confused because she comes out with Gail, and Gail actually comes out first. I'm like, no, why would she be the killer? That doesn't make any sense. I don't like that. And then she comes out right afterwards. I'm like, oh, okay. It's always pretty convenient. What if she weren't to run in here? It's all <laughs> kind, of, kind of would have been for nothing. Did you do much theater work? Yeah, I helped all in theater. All four years of high school. In, in any plays? Not as like big roles. Well, I remember for um, our church production, I played Joseph. Huh. Um, in kindergarten, I was Santa Claus in the Christmas play. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's the best role to get. Well, Joseph. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know who that is. The manger's full. He's with <laughs> Mary. And then she has the baby out in the manger. What's he doing with Mary? That's his wife. <laughs> but they never did it, right? No, she was pure. <laughs> Here we get the killer, and it is Mickey. Did you predict him? No. Nope. Dun, dun, dun. I always like that line, too. <laughs> yeah, Timothy Alphon definitely <coughs> plays a good, good crazy guy. Just those eyes. Just yeah. So big and just. Well, same thing with, um, actually, Laurie Metcalf's got those kind of crazy yeah. bug eyes, too. Laurie's just got the whole package for this role. I mean, just. Mm -hmm. Everything. She really sells it really the well. Because I think she shot this right after her final season of Roseanne. Hmm. Hmm. Poor Derek. He's doing good on the cross or the star. Hmm. Oof. Right in the chest. She covers hole? No, it would do no good. Julie's cover my yeah. hole? I would not cover yours. I got shot. You can cover your own hole. Not if I'm tied I'm up. Plug it. <laughs> Not what if I'm in your hole? What if I'm tied up and can't cover my own hole? You're going to blame the movies. So I think that, yeah, out of the seven killer, the four screen movies, he's the only one who actually wants to get caught, which is kind of, you know, this kind of really kind of shows, I think today, I mean... I think that there would even be more of kind of a Mickey killer than there was back in 97. Yeah, I agree, too. I mean, it seems like, I mean, yeah, I, I would only assume that the uh, these new kind of killers, if you were, they want to get caught. They want to get noticed and talked about and commented mm -hmm. on and posted about and blogged about. Well, and Mickey would get so many marriage proposals in prison. <laughs> Think of all the Twitter accounts you'd have. Oh, yeah. 
Mickey, Mickey's hair. I'm pretty sure Mickey does have a Twitter account. I know Sydney does. Oh, I'm sure. I think Mrs. Loomis does too. <laughs> Derek's dead body. Oh, he gets mm -hmm. dragged away mm. by the other killer. So yeah, this is the scene when Gail comes out, and yeah, the first time I saw it, I'm like, wait, what? I honestly had no idea. Like, I'm like, she cannot be the killer. Did this ever? Did this take you back the first time you saw this? Like, no, I don't ever remember actually thinking that. No, but I remember wondering. Who who in the world the second person would be? Just look at her. <laughs> the Prince Sean, that's his favorite line of this one. Mm -hmm. Billy's mother. Look how just smug she is about it, too. Well, what I want to know <laughs> is like, so she lost all this weight and she had a makeover. Why couldn't we have at least seen one? photo or something of Laurie Metcalf in a fat suit. <laughs> like, I think that just would have been so great. Like, I want to see what Mrs. Loomis looked like yeah. before. Hmm. Like, he's so proud. Yep. Like, they are happy. You think Mickey and Mrs. Loomis had sex? They probably did. No, I don't think they did. She doesn't have time for him. I think he would have. Got some cool blood effects here, too. Mm -hmm. Some really good ones. <laughs> Gail, Gail takes a digger. I love that close-up of his eyes. Mm -hmm. I remember the close-up of that, the bloody eye. That was actually the cover on um, the, the main menu for the Scream 2 DVD, hmm. which some of you guys might be watching. And I like, too, that this is kind of a throwback to the original, that she gets the question wrong about who the killer is, and then it's the killer's Jason's mother, and then that kind of brings it back here, that the killer is Billy's mother. So at this point, I'm picturing nothing but Zachary Allen in the... <laughs> white pants suit. <laughs> Killed Mickey Dad. <laughs> I love when she throws that yeah, gun. Yeah, her face. Whenever I mention any comment online to any horror people, and I mention Debbie Salt, everyone always quotes that. Debbie Salt doesn't exist. Hmm. So have you went back and watched these and tried to figure out for each of the killers who killed who? I never have, have you? That'd be quite the <laughs> quite the experiment. Though. I remember I did back in the day. I remember after this one came out, um, I did like for our class I did like this big like collage of all like my favorite screen <laughs> moments with like screen quotes and stuff. Like I made it on like recycled paper. It's for folk art. Hmm. It was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, again, kind of going back to the the setting of this scene, I mean, there's so much to work with, mm -hmm. with being this um, theater set. And, I mean, you not, you not only have 
the uh, I guess the working theater set on the stage, but you had the behind the scenes too, with the rope and as you can see her with the axe and the lights and I mean so much goes into this and it's it's really cool. I remember they showed the eye through the peephole in the trailer. That was one of the, like the the freeze frames they shot. And I remember trying to figure out whose eye that was. I love that she acts like that's actual fire. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> like, ah, it's hot. Look out. So have you seen the sequel? This one as many times as the original? Uh, no. It would be the close second. I could, could you imagine doing a, doing a scene like this with all those sparks flying and everything just falling and just... Yeah, there's, just, there's a lot of chaos. Yeah. There's so many opportunities for injuries, too, which would be just kind of scary. Mm -hmm. Not scary being injured, but I'm like behind the scenes is part, part of the people <laughs> being responsible for these people right? getting injured. <coughs> Silence. She dead? No. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, she's just full batch of crazy. <laughs> yeah, really well choreographed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seem like the like this be interesting to kind of hear some of the the inner workings of it. You know, who was the mm -hmm. choreographer? How long did it take them to kind of go through all the steps and the blocking? Yeah. I like how Cotton just kind of comes out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And I I I always loved this scene right from the very first time that I that I saw this. That like <laughs> whenever uh, Mrs. Loomis says anything like. She tries to talk like behind Sydney, <laughs> like because she's scared that she he is gonna shoot her. See, he just wanted an interview. Mm -hmm. That's all he wanted. Just wanted to meet Miss Sawyer. That's so much to ask. Let me kill her. <laughs> Those eyes. She said she had a prison for a <laughs> year. <laughs> That's another good line. You see, yeah, she like hides <laughs> behind her. But that Diane Sawyer interview is looking pretty <laughs> good right now. Yeah, look at her smile. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, I got this. He's going to shoot her. So were you wondering who got shot, or did you know it was gonna be her? Well, you always you always wonder a little bit, but consider it done. So, 
this point in the theater first time? Are you waiting for kind of a Billy moment? This is Loomis coming back. Um, yeah. Well, or I thought that Mickey wasn't dead yet. <laughs> Gil's still okay. It's good to hear. You heard it all. Like which, <coughs> which one of these installments was a favorite as far as the cast goes? Like, was there one that they enjoyed working on more than oh, another? That's a good question. Um, I know that for Scream Three, I think they only had Deb Campbell for something like ten days because mm. she was filming. Um, God, yeah, like that was kind of the peak of her career. And she was working on a lot of other projects. She had just gotten done with Drowning Mona. And she, I don't remember what movie she had next after that, but she literally did like five movies in a row. Hmm. So um, I don't think that she had a lot on that movie. But for favorites, that's a good question. I don't think that any of them have said. Probably the original, just because it was fun and fresh and doing something different for the first time. Mm-hmm. So I did like the uh, the way Sydney took that one last shot at uh, mm -hmm. Mrs. Loomis, and kind of a, a little nod back to the the whole Billy situation and right. situation at the end. <coughs> hmm. <coughs> There's still another survivor, <laughs> and it's you. So you don't think this would be you right here with the one shoe? <laughs> one shoe? shoe? <laughs> I've seen you act like this on nights that you've been drunk before. <laughs> Poor Dewey. Where did his other shoe go? Oh, that's the one he stepped in the pizza with. Yeah. <laughs> that's you. <laughs> he just took it off. Got stuck in the pizza. So everyone wants to talk to Sydney about her experience, what happened here. And she does the one last favor to say that Khan's the hero and that he should get the spotlight. Hmm. I can tell you it'll make a hell of a movie. Hmm. A good final line. It is. It's really good. So she walks away as we start with Collective Souls, she said, which they played earlier in the lunchroom scene. So here as they pan out, they show the bell tower. So this is what I was talking about in the original screen, that in the bell tower, originally they were going to have Ghostface be in there. Mm. And I would not have liked that. Mm -mm. <laughs> no. So did they end up reshooting it, or was it just some was sort that, of... I don't know if it was just in the script, or I'm not even 100% sure that they actually shot it to begin okay. with, but I remember that in the Wes Craven commentary, which actually, he does the commentary for all four movies, and they're all really good commentary, so check them out if you haven't already, but yeah, he, um, yeah, he said that that was the original plan, was to have the, the ghost face up there. Hmm, weird. Yeah, it was a good good last line. I think the uh, the last shot of the original screen was a little bit stronger, but um, I think no, I think they're both equal. Really? Yeah. I don't know. There's something about Gail breaking the fourth wall, talking right into the camera, and then no, I could see her that backing up, but um, but no, both both good. 
good films, good endings, good uh, good a little bit of everything, really. I do like how both kind of movies ends with kind of them showing off the exterior of mm-hmm. the movie. Yeah, yeah, just kind of using their uh, their well spent money as best as they could. So yeah, that is our Scream Two commentary. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and had fun with us. We will be back next week, as always, taking on Scream 3, which is kind of the, the black sheep of the Scream franchise. So we're looking forward to spending another two hours with you next Thursday. Definitely, yeah. It's been a while since I've seen Scream 3, so definitely looking forward to taking it in again and getting a little little Parker Posey back in my life. Okay, yeah, so you guys have a have a good uh, night or day, depending on when you guys are listening to this, and have a horror-filled week.